Welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. We are still working on lab techniques. This is the fourth lesson in a series of lessons on different lab techniques that you are going to need to feel comfortable with because we're going to be doing these all school year long. That's why we are talking about these things so early in the school year. Now, there's really not a specific skill here. I'm gonna be really honest with you, but we do chemical reactions all through the school year. So the reaction that we're going to look at is going to have a temperature change. Many times chemical reactions are going to have temperature changes. We're going to practice getting the difference of temperature. A temperature change is going to show that a chemical reaction occurred. When we're in the chemistry lab, we also measure with graduated cylinders. So this lab station is also preparing you to measure with graduated cylinders. Okay, so a couple of different techniques in this lab. We're going to learn that some chemical reactions change temperatures and when that temperature changes, that indicates a chemical reaction, so we're going to practice getting that temperature change. We're also going to learn when a temperature change occurs, sometimes the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. We're also going to go ahead and learn that vocab word in this lab station. And then, like I said, we're going to practice measuring with a graduated cylinder. You should still have your notes and something to write with, so keep those handy and let's get started. Okay, so I've used a graduated cylinder to measure my hydrochloric acid. I've got five milliliters. I had to go all the way down and, and put my eyes at the level of the meniscus to make sure that the bottom of the meniscus is on the five. When the acid was dispensed, why would you use a graduated cylinder instead of a beaker or a test tube? So I have my five milliliters. I'm gonna pour it into my test tube. And then let's get an initial temperature. Can you read that? Record the temperature of the acid, estimating it to the nearest tenth of a degree. Now that's going to be degrees Celsius because we're using the metric system in science. Okay, now I'm going to add the magnesium into the acid. I'm going to push the magnesium down a little bit more to make sure it all reacts. What are your observations of the reaction? Make sure and write these down. I'm now going to put the thermometer in to take the temperature. going to bring it up to the camera so you can read the temperature. What's the temperature at the end of the reaction? Reactions that give off heat, they release heat into the surroundings, are called exothermic. To us, this is going to feel warm. We're in the surroundings. If we're releasing heat into the surroundings, we're going to feel warm. And reactions that absorb heat are called endothermic, absorbing heat. We're bringing heat into the system. Heat is being absorbed. And if the reaction is absorbing heat and it's pulling heat into the system from the surroundings, the surroundings are going to feel cold. We're going to feel cold. Based on your data, based on that temperature change, the difference in temperature, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? What do you think? When the metal reacted with the hydrochloric acid, we saw bubbles, we saw gas, and we saw a temperature change. I hope you were paying attention to that temperature change so you can tell me if this reaction was endothermic or exothermic. Make sure you're staying tuned to this next lab procedure. We're going to talk about filtration. Filtration, another lab procedure that you will see all school year long. Until next time, bye y'all.